morning, everybody, and welcome to our February 2nd Sunday. I am going live from Kansas City today, and every month I pop online and I give you guys kind of the 411 on what is going on collectively, what's going on energetically. I know there's a lot of really amazing energy reports out there, and I kind of like to give you guys a quantum perspective that allows you to kind of get an all-inclusive vibe on where we are for our evolutionary period, where we are as, you know, humans, where we are as, um, you know, people, and really kind of bridging that gap between the spiritual journey, the scientific journey, and what I like to work in in the magical journey. And I am so excited about February because it's more of like the new year than last month. And the reason why is because we had to kind of get, uh, we had to like run through a lot of old paradigms in this last year and like catch up. And February is where everything goes live. Like if your life was about to go live, it would be in February of this year. And let me explain why. First of all, obviously we can tap in and use our maps of astrology and really understand that everything is always in divine timing no matter what. No matter what, everything is always in divine timing. Where you think you should be or where you want to be is really more about where you are. And that's what this year is going to really push you into being clear is where you are in coherence to your me, myself, and I, mind, body, soul, brain, heart, guts, whatever you want to call it, however you see those components of yourself, it is going to be about being with you, right? We already know that this this love is, thro- this year is throwing you into self-love, no matter what. You have old codependency programs, they're getting cleaned up this year, right? You got old self-hatred, it's getting cleaned up this year. You got relationship drama, it's getting cleaned up this year. And it's it's basically in alignment of let go or be dragged. Like you're either going willingly or you're going to manifest your way into scenarios, situations that are going to help you really get to know you, right? You spent your whole life getting to know the world getting to know everyone else, getting to know everyone's stories. You've built an entire world around manipulating other people's energies to decide who you are and how you feel. And you've gotten really good at that. But those coordinates are completely screwy when you trust them for who and what you are. And so this year is all about becoming that lion-hearted old soul again right? The one who already knows. But see, you don't know until you really get back to yourself what you do know. Until you get back to yourself, you know what everybody else knows. You know what everybody else thinks. And if you're dealing with any sort of trust issues with yourself, that's exactly the situation as you put yourself in is I know kind of what I want, but based on what you want, that doesn't merge. And so now I'm confused or I know what I feel versus what is available to me. And now I'm confused. I know what I want to do, but I also know what it pays. And now I'm confused. So there's this perpetual game that we're playing with our outside world that keeps us constantly in a state of doubt and fear, right? Resentment and worry because we can't identify with our true, true nature of our GPS system because we're too busy being plugged into everyone else's. And as we move into, you know, this full moon that started to really come forward last night, we've got about three days of this really solid, you know, heart of the lion type of energy. It's going to give you, it's going to give you new level of courage. It's going to give you a new level of kind of push to open that heart a little bit more um, and, and say no thank you to those things that need boundaries and hell yes to the things that make your soul come alive regardless of what they pay or what the outcome is. Remember, divine feminine is all about the nonsense frequency and sometimes the things that you should be doing in your world is about letting go and having it not make sense because it's the next piece of the puzzle to take you to the thing that will make sense but you're being tested in the way of understanding that when you let go and follow your GPS system right that you're going to be coming back home to yourself so the reason why I called this second Sunday 
Um, the vision quest. If you understand the idea of a metaphorical vision quest, it's almost like, you know, you go, you work with a shaman and they, they basically blow you out of your comfort zone as far as your five senses go. And then they send you out into the shadows or nature and they push you into this kind of deorientation or this disassociation of your old stories, your old paradigms, your old comforts. You know, you're out there kind of just you and the universe, right? You and the world and new levels of survival kick in that have nothing to do with late for work or how about you. And all of a sudden you're anticipating weather, right? A storm. And all of a sudden your body can kick back into its natural security system and teach you more about danger versus how you've been dealt dealing with your life with fear, right? Because as, as a collective, let's face it, especially here in the United States, we have an extra layer of shadow that we deal with in the United States. Now being able to travel around the world, I've been able to tap into the collectives of other parts of the world. And, and if you look at the identity of the United States in particular, it's like we're all runaways. We ran away from the collective religions, pains, hierarchies, you know, demographics, and we came to the United States to basically be free. But we know, right, through the understanding of quantum entanglement, that we can never outrun ourselves. So not only did we bring all of those old paradigms into the United States, we begin to shadow them and we begin to avoid them. And we begin to kind of create new systems and new identities around what we wanted to be. And that's why the United States is such a good reflection of what it feels like to not know who you are, right? We've got way too much abundance of, of um, you know, choices where if you give someone too many choices, right, they can't identify with what they want. And if you notice the rest of the world doesn't have as many choices. So it's interesting that when you come to the United States and you see this extra layer of shadow, you see this new layer of mental illness that is here that isn't in other parts of the world because they're still dealing with basic survival elements like weather, right? And things like that. And when we get back to our basics, we're understanding that without a vision quest, without getting raw and real, and alone, right? If some of you are getting pushed into this metaphorically in your lives, you'll notice that all you're doing is you're conditioning yourself for what's coming next. The conditioning of you, the resurrection of the true self is being birthed through what you would consider pain or obstacles or challenge, right? And, and through that understanding that if I just get back to myself, I actually have this answer. I actually know who I am. I actually can feel my truth, but it's very difficult for me to feel when I'm surrounded by everyone else's feelings and everyone else's viewpoint. Because I am social, the heart of what I am, I am going to be very quickly through osmosis bonding with other people's belief systems regardless of who I am, right? So that's why if you guys have been in my classrooms this year, you'll notice I'm really pushing you to elevate and spend time with people that are not that 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 are people that are doing better than you versus worse. I know it's it feels safe being the smartest person in the room. I know it makes you feel valuable being able to rescue and save everyone. But when you start to be, you know, moving into these higher places and you start to work with people who are doing more and in more of alignment than you are, you start to realize that you get to be the student again. And this is going to be the year of your studentry. No matter if you've moved into teacherism or whatever you want to call it, you know, you're going to be a perpetual student of yourself this year. This is the year of you becoming a student and studying you. And your life experiences will toss you right into it, right? You'll, you'll get pushed into this, whether you like it or not, you'll be pushed into this classroom. There's not going to be anyone else there except yourself. And you'll start to see the reflections of others just mirroring back parts of the unhealed parts of yourself versus having any kind of feeling about what they're doing. They're only acting as that mirror so that you could see that blind spot within yourself. So this idea of this vision quest, right? What I'm working with my students on in our classrooms right now is kind of instead of waiting for the life experience to line you up and then throw you out to the wolves, it's like, how about we go towards it? How about we 
fearlessly go into the woods metaphorically and face the shadows and face ourselves and lose the comfort zone of what is keeping us small, what is keeping us limited, what is keeping us so-called safe. Because you understand, and everyone can relate to this, is no matter how safe you feel, if you're not living a very advanced, you know, adventurous, um, high producing life, there is a part of you that will never feel safe. It's a paradox because understanding that you are a creator being and you are here to create, you're never going to feel safe for very long if you're not pushing yourself to your next level of understanding your own self-realization. And the way that we do this unconsciously is we set ourselves up through attraction because you have to understand that attraction is all inclusive that you are attracted to the thing you resist and you are the th attracted to the thing that you love simultaneously and the brain doesn't actually care which one of those it is. You'll notice your past relationships if you look at the level of attraction that you had for that person and at the end of the relationship, it was actually something that you were in avoidance or disgust or hatred towards. And it was the very thing that you needed to see within yourself to discover where those parts of yourself were hiding so that you could self-resolve through the reflection of others. Now, during a vision quest, it's usually anywhere between three days and three weeks where you'll go out on your own and you'll basically survive yourself, right? You'll survive nature, you'll survive your own hallucinations, you'll survive your own mind, and that as you return, you'll be ba basically put back together, right? And if you kind of look at the last year, like didn't 2018 and 19 feel like that? Right? It was kind of like you got pushed out to the wolves and you kind of like had to learn how to swim in the sea and you became amazing captain because of the storms, not because you were docked in the marina, right? So this year is only going to amplify and now say, okay, you guys have finished boot camp. Like eight, 2018, 2019, those were your boot camps. You guys are ready. Now we're going in and we're going in within. And so everything that we witness around us is a clue, it's a key to unlock new parts of you, right? And if you look at it that way, I know from the outside looking in, it's like, well, that sounds selfish. Absolutely. It is completely about self-focus this year. And to become the lion and step into the lion heart, a lion does not apologize for being the lion, which means it does not apologize for its diet. It does not apologize for the way that it handles its it's pride. It does not apologize because it, stay, it stays in more of a frequency of gamma, which is I know who I am, right? Theta is the imagination brain we use to kind of work up to that gamma space of I could be. This is what, uh, you know, this is what potential lies. This is the field of potential. This is where you get to decide and choose and the options show up. And then you can move into gamma and claim it. So we've been in this place of like this theta reorganization of our consciousness the last few years. And this year we're going to step into the knowing, but not without the challenges, right? And I don't want to say problems. I want to say challenges. Anywhere that you're in a high level resistance of is going to be brought right center focus to you right? Especially in the next couple of weeks, because the 16th, we've got a retrograde coming in and retrogrades are all about reboot, rewind, recon reconciliation, right? Re-remember, -re okay? So you're going to also notice in this year, a lot of you that are meditating and, you know, reaching those higher levels of consciousness, you're really going to start taking physical responsibility, the ability to respond for a lot of your old karmic stuff, right? So your old timeline situations, past lives, a hint that I can give you guys that we're working deep in class with is whatever you're disgusted or rejected by in your physical reality, anything that you're heavily judging, anything that you're heavily afraid of, any sort of resistance on the flip side of a timeline, either in a parallel reality or an old construct timeline, you were the cause of the effect, right? So what you could do is look at all of the things that you're avoiding right now or disgusted by or rejected or fearful or hating on, 
some of you, and ask yourself, what if on the flip side of a parallel reality, I am actually the perpetrator instead of the victim? What if somewhere in the universe, I'm playing the other side of that coin? How would you feel about yourself knowing that you are the one that is doing the things or has done the things that is the very most disgusting to your identification of self? Right? That's a quick way to kind of clean up your timeline is to go into the things you reject, the things you're disgusted by, and ask yourself those deep subconscious questions of who am I in judgment? Because what is the definition of judgment? It's protection. What are you protecting yourself from? When you identify bad or good in this universe, what are you actually identifying in protection of? How is that acting as a security system? Because judgment is not a bad thing. It's just a security blanket that we use to keep ourselves safe and away from the things that we don't want to know about ourselves, the things that we don't want to see, the things that we don't want to believe. So we keep ourselves in this isolated box and we have our, our goals and our dreams, but we never leave the marina. And we never leave the marina because it could be stormy out there. We could get lost at sea. We might not, never, we might not reach land. So we think about it, it, what it is, we study the maps, we talk to other sailors who have been out there, but we never sail the seas because of what could be. Now, if you start to find really lost immortal versions of yourself through this, this vision quest, then what you'll notice is that you are completely immortal and unlimited. Bring those fractal pieces of your consciousness back in to yourself. You'll realize that all of this journey ever was about was bringing yourself back home. Those lost, missing, broke pieces that have forgotten love, right, need to come back into a present being who can now love, who can now identify with what love is. And you're meeting yourself in the mirror this year. You're going to meet yourself in every situation and decide and discern who am I because of this right? Who do I choose to be because I've just discovered this about myself? Who am I? Who can I be because of this potential? Because not everything a lion does is good or bad in the ideas of what it's capable of, except who's observing it, right? So vegans out there are looking at the lion and saying, oh my gosh, I can't believe he ate the antelope. Yet the eagle is doing the same thing to the mouse, right? And, and the understanding of how the circle of life works. We have become big judges of what is right and wrong while we don't pay attention to our own paper where we are actually being the eagle and the lion in some form of our life, but we're calling it something different. You know, we're not eating the meat, but we're still in judgment of something over here. Or we're not doing this, but we're doing this over here. So we have to really, really get honest with our own BS this year right? And nothing will get you faster into humility and awareness and presence like a vision quest, right? So what could your look like without having to kind of go get lost in the woods, right? What I'm doing with my class is we're kind of creating our own vision quest that we can do in physical reality that it that allows us to be parents and still go to jobs and still do the things that we need to do, still take a shower and eat food, right? All good things. So because we're so multidimensional and our consciousness is so broad now, we can totally go deep into the shadows and still hold a state of consciousness no matter where we are. I can do it from my basement in Kansas City right? You can do it from wherever you are. So what that would look like is, like I said, start really paying attention to the things that you are rejecting, disgusted by, your patterns that are still showing up that you don't want, right? Your block points, your stuck points, where are you still blocked? Where are you still stuck? Instead of racing the opposite spectrum and trying to become unstuck, right? Sit with the stuck energy. Okay, talk to it. What does it mean? What is it a metaphor for? What frequencies are running underneath the surface that are, that are about deserving and worth and safety and freedom that you are not paying attention to? You know, give it a face. Give it an identification. It'll make it more comfortable for your ego to sit with something that feels more real than just you know, fear or doubt. It's like, because it's this waving numbness that we've created around our shadows that keeps us from getting to know them. And if you've ever sat with a very broken person, if you sit there long enough, you'll see that all those broken parts came from 
lack of love, broken heart, abandonment, rejection, right? And so the bad things that this person has done or whatever in their reality has basically just to build the walls around that construct of pain and keep everybody out. And they will do whatever they need to do through the path of survival to make that just. So sitting with those shadows is the metaphorical understanding of the vision quest and getting to know the things that disgust you, finding your hypocrite in them, finding where you are doing that maybe in a less disgusting way, but still the same, right? You see someone who is really overweight and you may have a disgust for them, but all they're doing is hiding, right? Hiding in their emotional pain, doing that to themselves. So you could say, okay, well, I'm not eating myself, but where am I hiding? Because if I'm in judgment of you, watching you hide actually scares me of myself when I see that. And so I have to judge you and push that identification away so that I don't remember that I'm hiding too. So it's very important that you take full responsibility of your own shadow this year. Otherwise, the universe loves you so much that it will just throw you into hard, fast manifestations of basically giving you no choice, right? And by the end of this year, you will be, you will be a veteran of this journey. You will be... You, you will have come out the other side. You will have used every retrograde because every planet will go into retrograde this year for you on purpose, right? And it will bring you back to yourself, bring you back to yourself. And what you'll notice is that each month, your level of self-love will increase and increase and increase and your genius will start to be birthed from crazy unseen places. And you'll start understanding that all you actually needed for your whole life was to come back home. And when you become whole, then you begin to radiate a frequency of confidence and knowing that allows other people to trust you, to feel safe with you, to be inspired by you, or to be very triggered by your completeness so that they may go on their vision quest to become whole, right? Because remember, your job is to trigger and inspire by doing your own work eyes on your own paper. You know, the kid in the classroom who gets an A on every paper is going to trigger the child who gets an F every week. And that child who's doing getting the A on their paper is not doing it to piss the other kid off, doing it because that's what he is doing, eyes on his own paper, right? So when you trigger someone, understand that you're giving them a very important gift to go into their vision quest. And if you're being triggered, Use it as ammunition to go find, I spy with my little eye to go deeper inside and say, okay, what is this trigger linked to? What's the truth of this trigger that I'm avoiding? Because usually when you get defensive, it is because there is some sort of subconscious belief that what someone says is, is true to you and you don't want to know the truth, okay? So this is a very big month that's going to start the acceleration process for this first year. So really February is kind of like our first first, uh, first day of work, right? First day of your vision quest. And if you tap into the details of yourself more this year, you will be able to produce tangible results as you go, which means you're not gonna have to just go through this year of just, oh my gosh, it will be the best year of your life because you'll be with you, the love of your life, your soul's mate, you will be right there. Your trust will improve. Your intuition will improve. Your self-love will improve. Your confidence will improve. Your body will improve because your body is a biography of your mind. So your body can only show up as much as you believe in it, right? And then as a default and a bonus to all of this, as you begin to have this amazing experience with yourself, you start to meet other people that are in alignment with that and you begin to run. You begin to have a bigger playground. You begin to create unity you, you be, without ego. Because you know what? If I'm minding my own business and I'm taking full responsibility, I'm not going to be deciding with what you're doing as right or wrong. I'm going to either use it to help me or I'm going to use it as a discernment of what I choose to be next time. And you individually are completely irrelevant except a compliment to my journey. And through that compliment the world can really create healthy, healthy partnerships. All right. So that is the message for this month. 
Um, if you guys are new to hearing me and you understood anything I just said, you got tiny little nugget out of it, I've got hundreds of videos on YouTube. You can check out my website. I've got classes, all kinds of classes, thousands of classes. And, and my, my true intention on this planet is to help be that mirror for those blind spots, help remind you who you are, be your biggest cheerleader until you are in charge and, and really help you and walk this journey with you. So I've got hundreds of practitioners that we've trained all over the world. We've got our select few that are on the website. If you, you know, interested in, in doing this work with a mentor, if you're interested in going really deep, find me, contact me and, and make that happen. Otherwise your vision quest is going to be this year year where humans are going to really change into superhumans because our potential is completely unlimited and all it takes is a little self-reflection and a little le little less self-rejection okay so i'll see you guys on the flip side have an amazing month happy valentine's day celebrate all that good love stuff or get really triggered by it it doesn't matter it's all a gift and dive in because the sooner you get to work the sooner you start to understand how fun this game actually is. All right, bye for now, guys, and I'll check you later.